Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 Uh-huh, I sure will. Hey, good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. I've been saying it like that since I got it, too. All right, got a good one for you today. Yesterday, the other day, I was talking to you about the most effective weapon available to us as human beings, I think, is prayer. I think prayer helps us in so many ways. But right now, what I want to do is I want to show you how prayer pays off. I want want to show you what good it can do for you. Even me, I use it every day. And and the days I don't use it, I feel it. That, you know, the days that I go, you know, without talking to him as much, I notice it. I feel it. I feel a certain kind of way. You know, those, uh, those, that doubt starts slipping in again, that uneasy feeling of uncertainty slips in again, that, that wondering what I'm going to do starts slipping in again. It happens to me. It happens to everybody, man, I think. I, re- I really, really do. You know, if people would just keep it real with each other. Stop being this Christian, this Superman, because you ain't. You ain't. There's a scripture that says there's none perfect. No, not one. That's everybody. That, that that cover all of us, don't it? So sometimes I think we're a little too hard on each other uh, with that too, seeing as how we not perfect. We immediately want to just, just, oh, man, you just want to kill when we find somebody do something wrong. Especially if it go public. Everything go public now called social media. But anyway, I just want to talk to you about how prayer pays off. I mean, it's called the ROI and money. People got money, call it ROI, so return on investment. People are always looking for a return on investment. You know, nobody nobody in business really gives you money without understanding the return on investment. They don't even give monies to charities unless they think it can do something with the bottom line. A lot of companies work like that. I found that out myself. Sad, but it is true. So since everything is expected to work on a return on investment, I assume because we're human beings. So since we're all human beings, whether you're in business or or not, you're still in the business of living. I think when you pray, you should expect a return on your investment. You talk to him. You spent time opening up to him. You bowed your head to him. You humbled yourself. You got on your knees. I mean, but really we're talking God here, so really what you're doing ain't really about nothing, be honest with you. The little bit that you do do on his behalf, it, it, it just pales in comparison with what he does. But let's just say you want to call yourself invested. 
Well, let me show you how it pays off. This Because, see, for me, this is for me now, prayer pays off in different ways. That's what I had to learn. See, I was praying, but I was asking him specifically for what I wanted. I had the audacity, though, to turn around and tell him how to do what I wanted. <laughs> That's amazing, man. I can't tell you how many blessings I blocked coming my way by putting my faith in what I said I wanted and how I wanted him to do it. I want you to give me this. I want that person to go away. I want this person to accept everything you say. Then I want to go over here and I want this deal to happen like this. And I want that person to just step aside and let, let me through. And then I want that. I, was, I had it mapped out. God must have been chuckling really hard. <laughs> he had to be going, boy, I made you to be funny, but boy, you're funny now. So you're going to tell me how to do it. And you've all heard this right here. If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plan. Well, that's what I did. And that's how we pray a lot of times. We pray, and we pray in the prayer we're telling him how to work it out. Well, here's the deal. This is what I've learned. Prayer pays off in different ways. There's a different return of my investment when I pray. See, sometimes when I'm praying for something, a situation to dissolve itself or go away, sometimes I get courage out of the prayer. Prayer provides me courage. That's just to go on and look at it, I guess. Face it. Then sometimes when I'm praying about a situation, sometimes prayer gives me hanging power. Sometimes, man, it just I look up and I'm just handling it better. Sometimes prayer gives you laugh it off power. Sometimes, man, you just got to laugh it off. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> you tripping. Do you know what that is if you could do that? You know, it, it, sometimes it gives, it gives you a show of strength power. Sometimes prayer allows you to have the appearance that you got it all together. Nobody got to know the whirlwind, the, the tornado, the hurricane that's swirling in your life. You standing over there like the eye of the hurricane. You just And it's all swirling around you, but you standing there like the eye. You just as calm. That's what prayer does. So when you pray, man, it builds up a lot of things in you. You know what it's done for me? Prayer has built up character in me. It's made me have more character. Because I'm able to stand stronger on the things I say because I've been praying. Because I've been asking God for all of those return of investments. I've been asking God for courage. I've been asking God for hanging that power. I've been asking him to give me the power to walk away. I've asked him to give me ignored power. I've asked him to help me laugh it off. I've asked him to show me strength. But you know what I was doing? I was really praying, not really for them things, be real with you. I was asking him to help me. Lord, help me. You ever done that? You ever asked God for help? And then all of a sudden, a list of these things show up. See, sometimes how you want the problem to be solved ain't the best way. There's a lesson to be learned when we make mistakes. And sometimes you got to stay in that fire and you got to learn that lesson. But guess what, though? When you come out of it, you're going to be better for it. You're going to know more about it. Come on, y'all. Pray. He's solid. His word is true. It lasts forever. He do what he say he's going to do now. All day, all night, 24-7. He do it all day, all night, and then some more. His word don't ever change. It's true. It works for me. It worked for you. It worked for Jakes. It worked for Osteen. It worked for Kirk Franklin. It worked for Paula White. It worked for Billy Graham. It worked for Mother Teresa. It worked for Gandhi. It worked for princes, Arabs. It worked, man. It work for you. What you waiting for? Why don't you put prayer in your game? Watch what happened to you. You sitting in that jail cell and you struggling with it and they telling you blood in, blood out, you can't get in you. That's foolishness, man. What you mean? God can get you out of anything. Look, man, if you done read your Bible, he done got some people out of some sticky situations. I don't know what you talking about. If Daniel was in the lion's den and Jonah was in the belly of the whale, what you talking about? Where you are? You just sitting in a cell with some dudes around you talking about what they going to do. Man, you got to be real. God can't nothing do nothing. Nobody do, can't nobody do nothing to you. God won't give you the strength to handle. Prayer changes things, man. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. How I'm going to start it this morning, I really haven't made up my mind. But I do know that I'm grateful to be here to start. And you should be grateful to be here to hear the start. So let's start it with gratitude. That's how I'm going to start. I, don't, I just ain't, you know, yeah. it's just different today. <laughs> it's just different. So good, huh? Got up early, the worked out already, did cardio on an empty stomach. I'm dedicated, man, to getting this weight down. This summer is going to be the best summer I've ever looked in years. I'm talking about this going to be the best I've looked since I was, since I was probably 40. Uh oh. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. 25 years. Yeah, wow. 25 yeah. years ago. Yeah, 25 yeah. years. It's going to be my best summer. Y'all pray for me. Pray my strength in the Lord. Junior. Oh, wait. Shirley Strawberry Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica, Junior, and nephew Tommy. Junior, what's on your mind? Yeah, uh, you know, this morning I just found out something, man. They just told me how you handle emergencies from people. Do you really, do you really work, wait two weeks to call somebody back in an Listen emergency? Listen to me. Listen to me. Learn yourself something. <laughs> you can't let other people put their trash in your trash can because you need all that room for yours. So when people call me and leave messages, when people call me, hey, man, call me right back, man. I, I, I need to holler at you. Yeah. Say, man, let me holler at you. <laughs> These are all messages. Hey, man, I know you're busy. But man, when you get a when you get a moment, man, please give me a call as soon as you can. You hear any of them messages, any yeah. of them texts, do not call that person right back unless it's your child. Okay. Child, okay. you gotta answer. But other your people, mama. No, your <laughs> child, child and mama, you know. That's, yes, that's, yeah. But your child, that's it. Cousins, Mm-mm. associates. Never. <laughs> friends that really ain't your close friends. Yeah. Wait two weeks. Two weeks? That's <laughs> to a long call time. them back. Now listen to me. At minimum, yeah. at minimum, 72 hours. Three complete days. Complete. Yeah. 72 hours. From the time you get the message, figure 72 hours minimum. Call them back. That's the minimum. And and call them back with concern. <laughs> like hey man, what? my bad. I just got this message, man. Everything good? Trust me. All emergencies have to be solved within 24 hours. Oh. After that, it's no longer an emergency. Take yourself out the emergency call zone <laughs> so you're not the response team and answer to the emergency. But call mm. them back with concern. Hey, man, saw your message, saw me, everything good. He ain't even going to know what you're talking about because it's past. And your ass is good because you can. Thank you very much. A win-win situation. You better learn something. I did. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, the nephews run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time to start your morning off with the nephew and run that prank back. All right, Neff, what you got for us? Well, Shirley, this quote resounds all over the black community. We say it all the time. We say it all the time. And we're going to say it right here. Don't let these white folks get your ass whooped. Don't, 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 don't let them. I'm telling you now. Don't Don't, don't don't let it happen to you. Say it too. All right. We've all said it and we mean it when we say it. All right. It's from the bottom of our soul, from our spirit. Don't let these white folks get your ass whooped. Cat dog. Hello? Hey, I'm trying to reach Terrell. Yeah, it's Terrell. Who this? Hey, Terrell, this is Dre. Hey, you you work the uh you work the day shift, right? Yeah, I work at the day shift. I'm actually at work oh. right now. What's going on? All right, I'm on. I'm on the night shift with uh with Deshaun and Jamal. I'm on the night shift with I them. I don't know them, but is, is it something I can help you with, man? I'm at work, brother. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, we got a problem. So listen, us on the on the night shift, we hearing that you supposed to be telling everybody that we ain't doing something right. Listen, when we get a load in 
at the dock. We check that load in, we file it like we supposed to file it, and then we put and then we take the forklift and put everything where it's supposed to be. That's what All we right, do. Brother, what, what, that, they gotta, what they gotta do with me, brother? I'm at work. Because right they now. saying they before. saying that they saying that you saying that we ain't doing our job right on the night shift. Who is they? You got the wrong person, brother. Who is they? For one, don't no, tell they, me what they said. Oh, who it, said? You 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 ter, you Terrell, right? Yeah, it's Terrell, but who is they and I ain't say nothing like that. Okay, so but well, let me let me let me go let me go and clear it up like this here though. Don't okay. let them white folks help you get your whoop. Here? Yeah, my whoop. Who gonna whoop my brother? No, I'm I'm telling you right now, if we get one more complaint about they, they talking about the night shift ain't doing something right, I'm gonna tell you right now. We coming up there to the day shift and you're gonna get your ass You're gonna let them white folks help you get your ass What man. are you talking about, brother? So why I ain't making any complaints? If you bring your black on down here, then you talking about whooping somebody. Come on down here. I'll put this forklift up your. Hey, like bro. You, uh, uh, you, you can do, you can do all this woofing you doing right now. You can do all this woofing. What I'm letting you know is one more complaint go down about somebody saying something about the night shift. I'm coming up there personally. Bro, bring your down here, then, man. I ain't trying to hear all this bullshit. I'm not a work right now. You called me with this bullshit. I don't even know who you are. Talking about the night shift. Matter of fact, don't come down during the day shift. I'll wait for your. To come to the night shift. But well, you can do what you want to uh, do. I work a, I work a th double and whoop your ass and work that double. Whatever you got to do. It don't matter to me, Terrell. It don't matter to me. All I'm saying is, Sorry, you up there walking. You send a thug, you leave. Don't call okay. me with this bullshit. Oh why, why are you running your, why oh are you running your mouth? Why are you running your mouth, bullshit. folks? Why are you... Why are you running your mouth to the white folks talking about we ain't doing our job on I the night shift? nobody nothing. You better call somebody else and call me with this bullshit now. So, 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 what, why your voice getting high? Because you're lying. Wait, they getting high? What the f are you talking about? Who called me with this sh Hey, I'm, hey, man. You working tonight? Hey. You working tonight? Okay. I'm, I'm working tonight. I'm working tonight. You, 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 you tonight. I'm going to stay over. I'm going to work a double just to whoop your ass. Okay. Well, come get this double ass whooping then. Okay? Come get this double ass whooping because we already done found out you the person running your mouth to them white folks talking about the night shift. Night shift ain't doing Night shift ain't put this way it was supposed to go. Night shift ain't ain't check this order in right. Night shift, night shift. You well, blaming listen, every why don't you why don't you stop f***ing up and people will stop saying you messed up. Stop f***ing up and people won't complain on the day shift. It sounds we, we, like we, we messing up. up on the night shift. That's what I'm telling you, boy. It sounds like you f***ing up. They probably need to fire your oh, Okay, up. okay, you okay, cool. Ignorant. You know what? You know what? How long before you get you off, man? How long before you get off? Oh, How long before you get double. off? I'm working a double. I'm getting paid to whoop your ass tonight. Come on okay. in, boy. All right, Come cool. On, boy. Cool. Let's say no more. So how 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 your wife Cynthia doing? What? How you know my wife, man? How she doing? How the f do you know my wife? I'm oh, just saying. I'm just saying. I'm really, asking you a question. You really right? cruising for a bruising. You really cruising for a bruising. How the f you know my wife, man? Huh? How you, you know you, my you, wife? You, huh? I'm finna, I'm finna tell you. You want to know how I know huh? your wife? Yeah. You Do you want to know how I know your oh, wife? My, yeah, how you know my wife? <sighs> Terrell, this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife Cynthia got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> what? Steve Harvey Morning Show? What? Terrell, Steve Terrell, Harvey. slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. This is this nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife Cynthia. Ooh, nephew he, Tommy, he, see, you almost got your ass. Whoop, boy. God, I was 69 in the shit out this car. I was coming to whoop that boy. God, you damn near got me fired. The whole factory looking at me right now. God, I might have to kick your ass just for this if I get fired. Hey, hey, this one's nephew Tommy. Yeah, I'm finna see the Harvey show. God, yeah, it's nephew Tommy talking to him right now. <laughs> Hey, 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 Terrell, do me a favor, man. You got to tell me this, babe. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. Oh, <laughs> man, y'all got me. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of folks then fell in that, got their behinds whooped right behind. Believe you. <laughs> it's happened. It's happened. I'm, I'm with you yeah, you played too. I, I tell him. Didn't see you know? it. Didn't yeah. heard the statement and seen it. It's to happen. Oh, it's some folks that got their behind whoop behind some white folk. You've been out there talking to these white folk and you done came back with this mess. See, you done, like, boy, boy, you gonna let man. these white folk. <laughs>
Help you. That's what my mama used to put that in there. Help you get uh-huh. your ass. Not assisting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Help right. you. Mm-hmm. Mama just said, Come see the nephew. I'm all geared up and Go ready, ahead. man, for Beaumont, Texas. It's going down March 19th at the Julie Rogers Theater. And uh, in Beaumont, Texas, been by 25, 30 years since the nephew. God, dog, you getting old. Since I've been there. So, uh, 25, Oh, my God, I, I can't. Oh, since I've been there. You. Um, you mean it's I'm just been that long since you've been to Beaumont? You don't mean to we perform. Get the so we on air. Rogers. We don't got to wait. You Thank know you he so does much. his meetings on air. Beaumont, I'll see you. What are we talking about I'm not, off the air for? He, he do his meeting. I'm, but but you, <laughs> don't don't go to his meeting. That's what you got to do. Quit going to his meeting. <laughs> go. When he try to throw him, yes. quit going to him. <laughs> Thank you, nephew. <laughs> Coming up next, CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building, ready for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Rihanna clapped back at a spectator at the Dior Fashion Show in Italy. Plus, we will tell you why Steve Harvey is trending. Did you know this, Steve? You are trending Uh on Yahoo.com. We'll tell you about it. And our very own Duke of Ottingham is standing by to address those hoax rumors that the queen is dead. Because she's not. She's very much alive. Right now, it is time for Ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey. Hello. This one is from Renee in uh, Bastrop. Renee says, I'm a 49-year-old married woman, and my husband and I raised his sister's son, who is now 14 years old. Uh, the child's father passed away and left the child a nice sum of money, which my sister-in-law thinks she's entitled to. I've petitioned to put it in a trust for the child, and she threatened to jump on me. My husband refuses to try to fix things between us. And am I missing something? Uh, yeah, you're missing what money does to people. Uh, your sister-in-law. Yeah. Is that the boy's mother? Mother. Mother. Mm-hmm. But the, but they're raising him for what reason? Exactly. Well, it obviously say. because well, the only reason that happens is the mother hasn't taken on her motherly responsibilities. Mm. So someone else has done it. Now the mother thinks that the money is hers. You want to put it in a trust fund, which is absolutely smart for the child because you've obviously taken the interest of the child first. The mother has taken her interest first. She free to go about her life, do like she wanted to. Now I don't know if she's sick, she on drugs, I don't know if she ill. I don't know what the situation is, but she wants that money. Now, she threatening to whoop you. I would say, away from your husband, bring your ass on over here. <laughs> see, see what I, I don't like all this, what I'm going to do to you talk. I'm, see, let's just go and get it done so we can stop all this threatening stuff. Yeah, That's yeah. what I suggest. Bring your ass over here. Mm-hmm. Now, I, now, my husband, if you come over here and I've been told my husband about you, get your sister. Uh-huh. But he didn't. Then I have something for you. Okay. Very few people get their ass whooped in their own house. Mm. Very low. Very state. few people. Because it's something about you in your own home. You just ain't going to take no whooping yeah. there. Yeah. At all. I ain't never lost a house. I ain't never lost a fight in my backyard. I know where all these garbage can lids is. <laughs> right. All this here. Ain't no way in the hell you whooping my ass in my uh-huh. backyard. You ain't a boy on 112 whooping my ass in my backyard. So that's what I suggest. And No, she's wrong. You're not missing anything. She is. She's dead wrong. All right. Moving on to Sheila in White Plains, who writes, My husband and I have a 20-year-old son in college, and he's still dating his high school sweetheart. She is not enrolled in college, and she works for the city. She got picked up for having an expired license, so she called me to pay her fine. She and my son are on two different paths. Do I let my son see it for himself, or should I drop a few hints to let him know? Well, you can drop a few hints, but I'm going to tell you right now. Your boy down there at the college, he getting it in. (laughs) He not visiting her. He don't bring her down there. Trust me, he don't. She ain't coming. (laughs) He down there getting it in. He finna find somebody a little bit more on par. It ain't got nothing to do with education. Just somebody else got something on their mind. That's all. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, he down there getting it in. He got his own room and a key. Ain't no way. Just take your time, mama. 
<laughs> is that something a mom would want to hear, though, about her son Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> getting it in? He's down there getting it He's in. He's down there getting it Cre- creating options. Okay. <laughs> yeah, say that. <laughs> All right, moving on to Yvette in Wilmington. Uh, Yvette says, my husband cheated on me, and I paid him back. I went a step further and filmed it so he could see it. All he's concerned about is who the guy is in the video with me. He He's called me all kinds of names and cried a lot. He says he hates me. It's funny how men can dish it out but can't take it. Why, though? Well, I ain't oh. no why. <laughs> You gonna film that's it and show me? Of course. You and, and but, yeah. but 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 you you did it out of spite. Mm-hmm. Now you produce the spike that comes with the spite. <laughs> now you trying to figure out why it exists. You showed him right. a wow. video of a man doing you. Wow. You lucky yeah. you and him still here. Yeah. And all he want to know is the dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. He won't know the dude because he wants to do something to somebody. See, he crying to you because he ain't going to physically hurt you, but he wants to put his hands on somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why is you, that? Why men can't it? take it? Yeah. Cause, cause we can't it. take it. Because they yeah. can't, yeah. That's, yeah. It's a double Cause standard, we, sorry. Because we can't take it. But, 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 but hold up, though. We can't. We either, also but. understand if you can't take yeah, it. Yeah, we can't either. We can't take right. it. So now, what you taking it for? Because he ain't. Yeah, you set the camera up? Yeah. Shut up. You did That's what I'm saying, Tommy. We trying to Tripod find out where his, where, and everything? We trying to find where this room at. Where that, where that bed that y'all was in? Where is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is bad. Yeah, that was a little much. This is where bad. this lamp at I'm looking at? And the dude's stupid for being on the tape. Yeah. You let her film you? You're stupid. You're mm-hmm. stupid. Yeah, he's got a target on his back for sure. No, he's going through the phone. He's going to find that phone now. You fool. But, Steve, okay, she needs to be clear, though, why she should have Clear about done what? This. Why she should not Double have standard. Done this. Why is it yeah, the, she shouldn't have done this. Two wrongs don't make a right. She 49. All she could think no, is No, she ain't that. 49. How old is no, she? she's not 49. She doesn't say. Her name is Yvette, though. That's oh, yeah, she old. Yeah. 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 She, she 49. Yeah. She oh, yeah. over 30. <laughs> oh, yeah. And all nobody. she's concerned about it is it's <laughs> Don't funny how men can dish it out but can't take it. It That's ain't funny. funny. She doesn't get that. Mm. Men can dish it out and they can't take it. Y'all can dish it out and y'all can't take it. Nobody should have to sit there and take it. Yeah. This ain't That's the wrong. point. Period. Yeah. That's yeah. what she thinks yeah. the point is. So. Yeah. Right. This ain't the point who can take it the most. Because obviously can't neither one of y'all take it. If you could take it, you wouldn't have tried to pay him back. Right. Hello. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't take it either. Now, you're going to pay it back, and you're going to film it. Because hell Ooh. have no fury like a woman scorned. Yeah, she said she went a step further and filmed it. You said oh. that. You went a step further uh-huh. and filmed it. Now, you wondering why he can't take it, why he crying. Because he saw it. You didn't see it. You now, if he had filmed it, it with this girl <laughs> and sent it to you, to show you what he doing, how would you feel? So that's why he feel like that. That's a stupid question. And that was stupid. Now, you can pay him back if you want to. He stepped out on you. If you want to step out on him, that's your business. But when you filmed it, Ooh. you said you took it yeah. to another level. So now we at the next level. And I ain't never been there before, so I ain't got nothing for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's in the cloud now. Yeah. It's like exactly. Cloud got it. <laughs> You for hell naked in the cloud. And, <laughs> and it's All right, the cloud here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. If you're going to do it, don't film it. All right, thank you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We're all just loving Rihanna's pregnancy glow. She is so beautiful. Uh, looking good, pregnant Rihanna. Um Anyway, she arrived at the Dior Fashion Show in Italy late, and uh, as she made her way through the crowd on the red carpet, a spectator yelled out, you're late. And Riri rolled her eyes and clapped back at her and said, no sugar, honey, iced tea. <laughs> kept walking. And kept it moving, not, not right? where we at. <laughs> I loved it. As you stand outside. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. 
Yeah, guess mm-hmm. what? Yeah, she late, but I guess what? I bet it ain't start without her. No. Okay. Because no. every and everyone was talking about her outfit. Yeah. Rihanna's coming to the Dior show in Milan. She's on the red carpet late. That show finna wait. Yeah, yeah. In Paris. Well, they said Milan in the story. Ellie said it's Paris. Mm-hmm. It's Milan in the story. Milan, Italy. Milan, Italy. Ellie said it's in Paris. Oh, oh it's in Paris. Well, Ellie, you're stylish. Well, Ellie's a fashion expert. Knows, yeah. He, he knows, knows all That's about this. That's what he stuff. said. I'm just telling you what he said. <laughs> okay. And then he's a big Rihanna fan. He was actually heartbroken when the news broke that Rihanna was pregnant. Because <laughs> somewhere in his mind, that's his woman. <laughs> a clothes yeah. The bottle. sexy pregnant woman she is. She, could dress you. she had on a thong, <laughs> a bra, and just a sheer, like, sheer. Yeah. neck cover-up on it. <laughs> on. Oh, yeah. A thong yeah. works all the time. There's not, never a time a thong yeah. don't work. Even not when a you're bad pregnant. look. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's never yeah. a bad look. When I was up to 252, I had on a thong one time. I was unaware. It started as draws, but as I walked, I walked it into a thong. Over yeah. Sherry. And I had that on her. I immediately stopped. That was my last time wearing them drawers right there, because you got to get yourself a Tommy Dude, John Dude, them draws. in the trash. Yeah. Men don't really wear, wear thongs. All right. All right, so Steve, this story was trending on Yahoo.com. It's all about you. You tried to keep an open mind, uh, this was on Family Feud, when a Family Feud contestant said she could sing just like Beyonce. It was when the Blackstone and uh, the Fide uh, families faced each other. Well, take a listen. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Hey, are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yes, Steve, we encourage In your that. head. Heard that note. We heard In that. your head. Yeah. You she thought that it. was Beyonce? No, no. It was. Are yes, you see? serious? Yes. Yes. And what's wrong with you? <laughs> Y'all yes. should have been shut this down. <laughs> how long, how many, how many years have you been supporting it? Who asked for her to sing? Who does? Happy birthday. Yes. Who asked for her to sing? Who? Who wants her to sing happy birthday and everything? Wow. Man. I like the honesty. I love the honesty. Steve, Steve, what happened there? (laughs) You know, I didn't know it was trending, but I'm not finna play this game with you. Look, we got a game show to do right here. We ain't got no time for this right here. Hey, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Are you serious? Yeah. Let's stop this right here. I ain't got to hear no more. This not Beyonce. Your face, this ain't though. Lady Gaga. This ain't Jasmine Sullivan. This ain't this ain't Vivian Green. This ain't no damn body. This ain't this nothing. Why are you singing happy? Who asked you to sing? Everybody. <laughs> the family. You gotta support your family. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> well, Steve, uh, the article on uh, Yahoo.com went on to say the hilarious Family Feud snippet is just another example of why Steve makes the show worth watching. Yeah. <laughs> that was Bruh, really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, all I'm that. doing <laughs> is saying what I know y'all at the house <laughs> is thinking. Yeah. Soon as she start thinking, I know. As soon as she start singing, I know all y'all was at the house going, "Is is she for real? What, what? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Who listening to this sugar honey ice tea? What is? <laughs> what is so I, I ain't got no problem, man. And see, I'm not here to encourage bad behavior. Okay. All right. I'm okay. I'm not here Thanks. to encourage non-talented people. That's not my job. Not to encourage. Yeah, you're not my child. I stopped my children, Brandon Carly. I pulled him out of piano after I went to the first recital. I pulled him oh, right Steve, out of piano. Steve, you didn't give him a yeah. chance? The first nah, y'all black ass don't play piano. All these white kids in here playing all these songs and stuff. Y'all ain't finna be up here embarrassing me. I tried to act like they wasn't my kids, but they were the only the black ball, kids. No. <laughs> I took their ass right out of piano. Y'all don't have it. Y'all don't have it. I done bought you a little keyboard at the house, which cost me way more than I had at the time. I done bought y'all a keyboard at the house. 
And Dang this is what y'all up here doing in front of these white people. I'm pulling y'all ass out of piano because you're not going to embarrass my black ass at the next recital. Or <laughs> Had them in tap dance. Had to take their little chubby ass out of that, too. You're too heavy. You're too heavy. You're too heavy. The little Brandon Carly, little thick little things when they was growing up. Y'all don't need to be in these little tight ass ballerina outfits and stuff. All these little skinny ass white kids. Y'all come on out of tap. Yeah, so that was good. And 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 go on to grow up into what you're gonna be. You're not finna be tap dancers and y'all not fin- finna play piano. I saw that at eight. <laughs> you're the worst. We're finna do this no more. <laughs> y'all can't sing. We let's get out of all these classes. I ain't got no money for this here. <laughs> what about art or something like that? Where... Drawing is free. <laughs> Drawing, drawing free. Yeah, we get some paper and ink, cut crayon. Go on, draw. All right, coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we'll talk about some trending politics right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In his first State of the Union address, President Biden received applause from both sides of the aisle. The president said the U.S. stands firmly with Ukraine, and he vowed to make Russian President Vladimir Putin pay a price for invading Ukraine. The president also said COVID-19 need no longer control our lives. We can remove our masks. But the nation must stay on guard and prepare for the possibility of new variants. The president also praised his nomination of federal judge Katani Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court. If confirmed by the Senate, she will be the first black woman to ever serve on the high court. Biden also addressed the violent crime wave in the U.S. and he called for the hiring of more experienced cops who can restore trust and safety. The Republicans, of course, responded, saying President Biden and the Democratic Party have sent the U.S. uh, back in time. And they also slammed the Democrats for supporting requiring vaccine mandates and criticized some for calling to defund police. Well, listen to this. First of all, the Democrats haven't set America back again. Donald Trump did that with the Make America Great Again campaign. That was done by them. That's why the Republicans won't uh, renew or pass a proper Voting Rights Act. That's why they rescind everything President Obama did. Have you noticed that you don't hear the Republicans talking anymore about uh, the uh, Health Care Act? Obamacare. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. Because you know what? Uh It's good for everybody. So now they've stopped all that chatter because that backfired. Repeal and replace Obamacare. It's amazing how they do. Now, mandatory vaccines, yes, really needs to get vaccinated. And it's proven that it has helped slow the hospitalization rate in this country. It's proven facts. And deaths. And (laughs) deaths. That's why you can remove the mask now. Because the variant, now be aware of the upcoming new variants. How the hell we know what that is going to be? But we've already proven by being vaccinated, you lessen the chances of dying in hospitalization. Right. Period. Exactly. So now, you know, these, these dudes right here. And as far as they clapping for, uh, you know, we're going to make Vladimir Putin Vladimir pay. Putin. Mm-hmm. All we can do is put some sanctions on his ass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're working, he says. Oh, he's he's yeah. sanctions. That's all we can do. Let's just do that and, and shut up all this talk about war. Mm. We don't need war. We've got to find a way to get mm-hmm. this without war. Mm-hmm. The loss of life is good for nobody, especially the life that's lost. Right. And the families that's left to deal with it. And rich people ain't dealing with this. All right, Steve. Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we'll check your voicemail at 877-29-STEVE, 877-29-STEVE, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time to check Steve's voicemail. If you would like to leave Steve a voicemail message, call 877-29-STEVE, and you can hear your message on the air with us. Steve, are you ready? Here we go. Oh, here's a caller talking about earthquake. Hey, Uncle Steve. Hey, morning crew. How are you guys? This is Dottie 
from Brooklyn. I'm just calling to say I watched um, Earthquake and it was hilarious. He did a great job and job well done and he deserves all the glory. You guys have a great day. Daddy. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Daddy. And whoo, we gonna just say she was born before 1970. <laughs> yeah, yeah. her name is Daddy. Daddy, yeah, maybe, maybe Daddy. 60. Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely before Ooh. 1970. See, before 1970, that's born in the 60s. Yeah, Daddy. <laughs> okay, Daddy. Yeah. All right, this next caller is about the January 6th insurrection, Steve. Big and Steve, I want you to understand something. A mother can break in an empty house down here in the south, down here in Alabama, and get down 15 years. Now, these white folks can broke in the Capitol on film. It's crushing, breaking in, tearing up the Capitol, and they get a slap on the damn wrist. That's the white man privilege. It'll make no damn sense. Now, where you'll take this man to coke for, and you see these folks tearing these places up and breaking in. Hell, you got them on camera. Hell. But, I mean, what's the difference? They don't need to go on no coke. Just lock their ass up for 15 years. And he to get the source. Hell, he told them to go down there and fight like hell. You know who that is. That's all I got to say. I know. Translate all I this. Exactly. I love him. Where, where was I love him. See, what he was Court. talking about was he don't Court. understand how, since we got all these people on mm. film that's breaking in the Capitol, how we ain't done nothing when a man down south can break in an empty house and get 15 years. That's right. And we know the source of who sent him down there. We all know who that is. That's a reference to Donald Trump. But we need to do something about this because he don't understand the difference from breaking in and breaking windows when you got them on film versus other people. Whenever real country people are talking, please refer to me because I'll be crystal clear about what they say. <laughs> and I'd rather enjoy people like him. Than, do you have a name on him, Shirley? Uh, no, there is no name. No. Yeah, that was my man. I just loved him. He was from Montgomery. My... But I have a question. When he said uh -huh. coat, coat, they don't have to go to coat. What was that? Court. That's court. That's oh. makes appearance in front of the judge. <laughs> I knew that. One, coat. Carla. You was thinking oh. for like a like he was wearing a coat, but no, that's to attend to uh -huh. attend <laughs> a, a proceeding in a judicial <laughs> atmosphere. Coat. We got, coat. We got coat. Yeah. Point, though. <laughs> yeah. See, that, I got all this for you. I know how that's this goes. but I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, nah, that's it. I, I was clear. I understand exactly what he said. That's when, when Tommy said, give me a translation. I ain't hesitate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's another one. Uh, call her just to say thank you. Hi, Steve and the morning show. This is Tanika, and I just wanted to... um express you know my gratitude for your um platform that you used a few years ago you had a platform called locate your love and i found the love of my life and i've been ever wanting to tell you thank you for that and so thank you for all the relationship advice you've given to people and thank you for making your morning show just a breath of fresh air and you know people can enjoy on the way to work have a good day blessings to you and and the radio crew. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you she very really much. Gets... That's real nice. Thank you. Yeah, she's been listening mm -hmm. a long yeah, time. Yeah, she gets exactly Locate your love. Locate your love. Love, Man. throwback, right? <laughs> and, and she found the love of her life on our dating show. Is any chance no. of us bringing that back? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're exhausted from it. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun you while we did it, though. It was no fun. idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, it's a process. Promise you that. There were some it's people on there, Uncle. That. We had some good. We had some good laughs off of it. Yeah, good memories. Yeah, because people still ask about that. You finding you hooking them up with other people and you know helping them find love. Yeah, I'm out of that business. Yep, that's over. <laughs> <laughs> You're a judge All right, if you now. want to leave a message for Steve, yeah. we're moving on. Call his voicemail at 877-29-STEVE, 877-29-STEVE, and we might play your message on air. Coming up next, it is a prank phone call from the nephew right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's the strawberry letter for today. The subject is, he has a lot of jokes in the bedroom. Hmm. We'll get into that in just that a little ain't bit. Fun. <laughs> right. That's that ain't fun. You don't fun. want to joke. All right. Mm. <laughs> the nephew is here right now, though, with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? 
Freddie, I think we're going to lash out today, you know? We're just going to lash out. That's, yeah, yeah. You know, every, t- every now and then you want to lash out, don't you? So that's, that's the title today for the prank, Lashing Out. Cat dog, if you would. Hey, it's lashing out. How can we lash you out? Uh, I'm trying to reach Bianca. This is Bianca. Hey, hey, listen. My name is Brian. My um, my wife Jamie come up Hi. there and get her eyelashes done. Is uh, who the, who's the owner of this place? I I am Brian. What's going on? Okay. What's going on? You be you're Bianca. You the one that owned the place. I'm Bianca. I'm the owner. We opened about a year and a half ago. Proud, happy, black-owned, women-owned, women-owned establishment. What can I do for you? What okay, kind of here's the deal. I'm sick and tired of my wife coming up there, and then when she get back home, she got these thick ass eyelashes on, and they long as hell. You know, I mean, it's they, these eyelashes thicker than somebody's mustache. This a damn shame. You know, now I didn't told okay, her to take Brian, these. Brian, Brian, hold what? up, hold, hold up, Brian. Now I. I may or may not be the person doing it, but whoever, I'm pretty sure probably that sounds familiar, but whoever, we have a lot of customers, but whoever comes in here, they pick their lashes. We, we you know, we collaborate, but the girls are saying what they want done. They pick it. So if they're thick, they're thick because they want them thick. Okay, you well, know? these are too, they too thick and then, and they too long. Your, your eyelashes ain't supposed to be sticking away out past your nose. That's a damn shame. Uh, but let me let me tell you what I'm getting at, though. Here's 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 my reason for calling. If my wife come home one more time, say what? Brian, you, can you simmer down? Because I mean, I'm running a business here, and you sound crazy. They can hear you through the phone. The girls are looking at me in the chair. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Can you calm down? You loud and screaming. And all, all I'm saying is, if my wife come home with these la- long, thick ass eyelashes again, I'm gonna come up there and raise holy hell at that damn place. And I'm telling you the truth about that. Why are you threatening me? You are not coming up here. We just I'm coming up there if my wife come home with them thick ass long eyelashes again. I am. No, you're not coming up here. We just opened a year and a half ago. We are doing good. We don't need no drama from nobody. You need to talk to your wife. Fix your marriage. Don't come out here taking it Ain't nothing wrong life. with my marriage. The only thing wrong with my marriage is these damn thick ass eyelashes and they too long. You know, That's the Why are you why are you calling me with this? See, now I'm yelling. Because I'm calling shot. because this is and where she got it? her eyelashes done. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Then you need to talk to your wife. Okay, I need to calm down. I'm running a business here. What you trying to do? Sabotage me? What you work for the company? I ain't trying to sabotage somebody... nothing, but I tell you what, if she come home with these long, thick ass eyelashes again, I'm going to come up there and I'm going to find all the violations of codes and everything, building codes, and, and I will get you shut down if we, if we don't stop these long, thick ass eyelashes. Okay, Brian, I'm from the South Side, so mother you need to back up, because now you're threatening my livelihood. Yes, I'm going to go there with you. you threatening my livelihood. you threatening the jobs of so many girls here. What are you doing? You need to talk to your wife, and you need to back the up, and I am sorry to curse. We try to speak class here, but now you're making me lash out at from lash out. Mother you need to back up. This is my job, and people have jobs. What are you doing threatening to come up here? I will call the cops on you, and you will not be able to come up here, and we will not let your wife get her her, her eyelashes on you. And you need to fix your marriage because you got some anger issues. Clearly, you pissed off at your wife, and you calling us threatening to ruin our business. Ryan, what is your wife's name? What, what my, is wife name? Is, my wife's name is Jamie. Okay. Does anybody in here know Jamie or do Jamie's lashes? Okay, it's like four girls raising their hand because everybody goes to somebody different. So I don't know who is does Jamie's lashes, but you got some anger issues, okay? I ain't got no anger issues. The only problem I got is my wife having some long, thick eyelashes, and, and they further out than her nose and thicker than somebody's mustache. That's what I got a problem with. Okay, you know what? Jamie just needs to leave your ass because if you got an issue, call her. Why are you calling us? I'm calling the people that, that put. Why, why wouldn't I call the people that put the thick ass eyelashes on? Why wouldn't I? Well, first of all, you need to talk to Jamie and send her up here. We are gonna tell her that to leave your ass. First of all, second of all, I don't. I cannot help you. You are interrupting my grinding. Okay, you are interrupting our grinding, and we got a business going here. What is your problem? Can't you go do some work? Go and talk to your wife and fix your marriage. 
You know what? You know what? You know what? I tell you. I tell you. I tell you what, Bianca. I tell you what. You're not trying to fix. No, no, no. You ain't trying to fix the problem. I'll be up there. I'll be up there, and 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 I will bring somebody that will shut that shit down. Somebody call the cops right now. Call them now. Tell them somebody is coming up here, and they threatening us. They lash out. Call. See, they three girls calling right now. So bring your little up here, mother. Come on. Come on. Bring it. Bring it up here. Bring it up here. Well, let me ask you something. Is 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 Carmen up there? Yeah, Carmen is sitting in my face right now. What is going on doing? How, you know him, Carmen? It's, Why are you asking me about Carmen? Where, where, is, where is Carmen at right now? She's right here looking at me. What? <laughs> what is going it's, on, it's, Carmen? Is she, is she laughing? Hold on. Yeah, now she's starting to laugh. What, is, what the <laughs> going on? Y'all got me looking crazy at my Hey, shop. Bianca, Bianca, calm down, baby. Check this out. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your girl Carmen got me to prank phone call you. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. Carmen! <laughs> okay, you know what? Y'all got me out here looking bad. I cannot. Tommy, <laughs> Tommy, Nephew Tommy, oh my nephew. God. Oh my What's God. up, baby? Oh my God. Baby? Baby. Oh my God. <laughs> What's up, girl? I'm just oh lashing God. out a little bit. That's all. I'm just lashing out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, nephew Tommy. I was acting crazy. You got to tell the nephew what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest radio show in the land. The one, the only Steve Harvey morning <laughs> show. Always. Forever. Forever. I love y'all. Wakanda forever. Ever. I love Bianca. Kept it classy for as long as she could. Ladies, how far are your lashes supposed to be? I mean, how how far? The look you want. You know, some people. We wear. I wear a natural look. I like mine just to look natural. It's not supposed to come down to your nose, like you said, and all that. I ain't a lady, but I know ain't gonna be past your nose. (laughs) No. The thickness when they seem like they can't keep their eyes open though. I'm just, I just want to know. Yeah, they get heavy on the lid. Heavy yeah. on the lid. It's a bit much. It is my a bit cousin, much. My cousin. And walked we wear in my them every day, but um, I love lashes. Uh-huh. She Me had too. these lashes on that was so low. My cousin walked in my grandmother's house, and she was sitting there first chair. She said, "Hold still." Balled up that crossword puzzle and went right across her eye. <laughs> she, <laughs> she thought, thought it was, was a spider. She thought it was some other. <laughs> What is this damn caterpillar on here? What is that? Yeah, it could get a bit much. You sound crazy. You need to calm down. Beaumont, get your eyelashes ready. Because the nephew coming to (laughs) town. All right. I I, I want you to see the show, so don't wear them too far out there where Mm -hmm. you're going to miss the show, all right? March 19th, baby's going down. Julie Rogers Theater. Tickets on sale right now. Eyelashes accepted at the door. Okay. The ones down to your nose, too. They can come, can't they? <laughs> Ooh, you're going to miss the show, though. If they out there past that nose, you're going to miss the show. You can't see me through all that. I'm sorry. But you're making money, though. <laughs> I'm going to make you laugh it. them eyelashes off. How about that? Let's do that. <laughs> Let me just off. laugh them off. <laughs> all right, here we go. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter. Subject, he has a lot of jokes in the bedroom. We'll find out what that's all about right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter, your letter, live on the air. And you never know, it could be yours, okay? You never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Subject, he has a lot of jokes in the bedroom. Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been dating a man for four years, and we were supposed to get married before all of the COVID drama. He moved into my house, and that's when we really got to know each other inside and out. I sleep naked, but I never did it around him until we started living together. He's got a nice hard belly, and I have a little soft one. He's got knocked knees, and I have a little bit of cellulite. I have a nice chest, but it doesn't sit up like it used to after two children. It's all age-appropriate because we're almost 50 years old. I have the stress of having two kids in college. I take care of his 15-year-old daughter. I work full-time and run this household. 
So yes, I may have gained weight here and there. I am constantly reminding him that he's got more belly than me. Lately, I've been sleeping in pajamas because of his jokes about my body. Right at Christmas, he told me I reminded him of Frosty the Snowman, and I laughed it off, but it hurt. He makes jokes in the bedroom, and it's a turnoff. He thinks it's cute to call me thickums or bubble butt, and I told him it's offensive. Recently, I was in bed reading a book, and he asked how I could read the words with my breasts in the way. Uh, He used to shower with me, and now he says we both won't fit in it. Uh, I told him he's rude and doesn't care. The last time we were intimate, he called my back fat his handlebars, and he kept gripping it. Um, He's even said that he can tell my breasts used to be nice and firm. He's never had a problem with them before. It's all too much for me, so I hide my body from him now. I feel like he's not attracted to me anymore, and he'll end up cheating on me. Is this a sign, or do I need to relax and learn How to take a joke. Mm. Okay, here we go again. First of all, you should be thanking God because it sounds like uh, you may have dodged a bullet by not marrying him. Now you just need to figure out how to get him out of your house and out of your life and stuff. Yeah, his jokes are rude. They're mean. They're nasty. Uh, Especially if you told him they were offensive. Uh, They're not funny. These are not jokes. Uh, he, He should be supportive of you no matter what state you're in right now. Uh, And he's destroying your confidence. Uh, This whole letter is about him saying insulting things to you and insulting things about you. Uh, So I say you're right. It it doesn't sound like he's attracted to you anymore. And he might already be cheating uh, with, with, you know, comments he's making to you about this. Um, what What do you need him for? I think just about everyone gained a little weight during the pandemic. Uh, It's called the Pandemic 15. You didn't say how much you gained or anything. You just said you may have gained a little here and there. So I just say get yourself together for you. Do it for you, not him. Uh, You need to feel good about yourself again because he's certainly not helping you in that area. You need to do this for yourself. Stop listening to him. Stop listening to his negativity about your body. He's not a nice man, and he probably won't make a good husband anyway. So stop listening. Get yourself together, and boy, bye to him. Steve? Yeah, um, here we go. This is my my specialty here. (laughs) Because in this letter, the title says, he got lots of jokes in the bedroom. I have a solution for this. First of all, I agree with what Shirley said in her response. So I think this is something that you should highly consider. I have another route you can take because you're not fitting to be the only one up in here with these jokes. So let's get started. As I'm reading this letter, I'm going to equip you with bullets. Once I know we shooting, Oh, we shooting? Boom, here we go. Mm. I've been dating a man for four years. We're supposed to get married. Before all the COVID drama, he moved into my house, and that's when I really got to know each other inside and out. You know, I sleep naked, but I never did it around him until we started living together. Beautiful thing, sleeping naked. I'm a fan of that. I recommend it highly. I do it all the time to keep from things getting twisted up in pajamas, if you know what I'm saying. So I love the freedom of sleeping naked myself. So congratulations, lady. Uh, I sleep naked, but I never did it around him until we started living together. He's got a nice hard belly, and I have a little soft one. Well, let's talk about that. Okay. I don't think a woman having a hard belly has ever been a criteria for getting married, for loving her, wanting her, or dating her. I've never had a guy that went, man, if I, my woman ain't got a hard stomach, I ain't got nothing to do with her. Well, good luck, homie. Good luck. Right. Good luck. You finna be by your damn self. <laughs> now, if she do have a hard stomach, cool. We'll take it. But we found out that the woman has children. But anyway, here we go. He's got a nice hard belly. I have a little soft one. He got knock needs, and I have a little cellulite. Now, here we go. He got knock knees. They ain't a knock knee person nowhere living can talk to me crazy. (laughs) 
I I'm not finna have it. In on those knees. See, I am what you finna do with your knock knee <laughs> broke ass. And I would make stuff about his knock knee had nothing to do with your knock knee broke ass. That had nothing to do with your money making capability, but I'm gonna make it about that. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. With your knock knee ugly ass. See, I'm gonna bring your face down there where the knees is at. See? I got your money down there. I got your face down there. Watch how this letter go. I'm going to give you the bullets you need when we come back. All right. We'll have part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, he has a lot of jokes in the bedroom. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject he has a lot of jokes in the bedroom. Ah, uh, ha, ha, he, he. He got jokes in the bedroom, but he hurting uh-huh. this woman's feeling. This woman is almost uh-huh. 50 years old. She's been taking care of his child. I'll get into that in a minute. And now all of a sudden living together, she's been sleeping naked, but now he's making her feel conscious about her body. And she started describing stuff. But see, if you got jokes, if we shooting jokes, then let the, I'm a professional. Let me give you some began. things back. Now, Shirley yeah. gave a great response about what she should do, but here's some other stuff. Uh, he's got a nice, hard belly, and I have a little soft one. Well, you mm-hmm. have children. Mm-hmm. So what? He got a hard belly. Most dudes I know with hard bellies, other than The Rock and Vin Diesel, is broke. Most of them I know with hard bellies is broke because you got to spend time in that gym. Time in the gym is way from time from making money. Now, unless your money is being in the gym, which is them dudes right there, you're probably going to have a stomach like Tommy, Kill, Uh-oh. me, Jay, you know, people like that. You saw Will Smith's last picture. <laughs> and he's rich. Hello, as hell. <laughs> Hello. So, you know, here we go. Now, let's just talk this out now. I'm going to be nice to him. He's got knock knees and I have a little celly like. Knock knees. That's your that's your bullet right there. Right. Mm-hmm. He knock knee. Re- use that in everything. Look, you little knock knee broke ass can quit talking to me. Cause I bet he is, cause he got time to make a six pack. So when you got time to make a six pack, a lot of people ain't got time to make six figures. <laughs> so now what you which which six you want? You want the six pack or you want these six figures? What you want with your ugly ass? <laughs> Always work. Most knock need people is unattractive too. Wow, that's below Especially the Especially dudes. Uh-huh. Now I've seen knock need beautiful, attractive women, but most dude does knock need is unattractive. Use that one. Let's move on. I got a nice chest, but it don't sit up like it used to after two children. Don't nobody chest looking like it used to. Hell mine don't. But you got two children. So mm-hmm. now your chest don't sit up like it used to. That's okay. It's all age appropriate because we're almost 50 years old. I got the stress of having two kids in college, and I take care of his 15-year-old daughter. You know why you have to take care of his 15-year-old daughter? Because his ex-woman don't want his ugly knock-kneed ass. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? If he yes. was all that, you wouldn't have to take care of his 15-year-old daughter because the other woman had walked out because of his broke knock-kneed mm-hmm. ass. I work full time and I run this household. So yes, I may have gained weight here and there. I'm constantly reminding him that he's got more belly than I do. Oh, now, so now the little hard belly done got a little swole. Now with your Pillsbury Doughboy knock need ass coming over here talking to me. <laughs> See, I'm just giving you the bullets you need. Ooh. I'm constantly reminding him that he got more belly. I've been sleeping in pajamas because of his jokes about my body. Right at Christmas, he told me I reminded him of Frosty the Snowman and I laughed oh. it off. Okay. Oh, that's harsh. Well, since you got them knock knees and I remind you of Frosty the Snowman, you remind me of a tripod getting broke down for it get put in the case. Oh, <laughs> you giving her. With them damn <laughs> knock knees. You're sitting M-O. up here broke ass, tripod, <laughs> walking ass. You ain't finna be talking <laughs> yeah. to me crazy. Yeah. Uh. And finish it with your ugly ass. Huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. With your ugly that. broke ass. Yes. But to walk like a tripod, an old ragged ass tripod with them knees touching together. That's why you can't wear corduroys because you used to start fires in school. 
<laughs> All that whisking and rubbing your thighs again. That's why you can't wear corduroys because you started fires at school. Oh, I got something for your ass right here. <laughs> See, and then he said he makes sure in your bedroom and it's a turn off. He think it's cute to call me thickums or bubble butt. And I told him it's offensive. Recently, I was in bed reading a book, and he asked, how could I read the words with my breast in the way? That's a compliment. <laughs> it is? That's a compliment. It is. Okay. Thick. Okay. Yeah. Down. If I got a book in front of me, mm -hmm. and I can't read the words, and I'm a woman, that's because your breast is in the way. <laughs> now, what you want to do? <laughs> that's a compliment. Mm. He used to shower with me, and now he says we both don't fit in it. Ooh. I told him he's rude and, and he doesn't care. Last time we were intimate, he called my back back fat with handlebars and he kept gripping it. And then he says, he even says, he could tell my breast used to be nice and firm. Well, see, let's stop right here. Let's go back a couple of lines. Last time we was in there, he called my back fat handlebars and he kept gripping it. Mm -hmm. Then you should have said, well, at least you got something to grip. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And then when he said, he even said that he can tell my breast used to be nice and firm. Then your comeback is, and so did you. <laughs> <laughs> you used, to be, used nice to be nice and firm. Hello, let's mm. hurt him where it hurt. Because he <laughs> don't same. know, see, you got <laughs> to stang him. Yeah, I like it. He's never had a problem with them before. It's all too much for me to hide my body from him. Is he cheating? Will he end up cheating? Girl, please, you know how many people want you? Don't nobody want his knock kneed broke, ugly, little, small, no longer firm ass. So what is we talking about? <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Post and get comments. out of my house and find somewhere to live, but you can't live nowhere because you're knock kneed and you're broke. <laughs> Post your comments and on you're ugly because don't letter. nobody else want you. And Steve Harvey FM With on With your Instagram. little soft self. And Ooh. Facebook. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand coming up at 46 minutes after the hour. Sports Talk with Junior right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Let's go. April 1st, Dallas, Texas. Coming, Texas Trust Theater. Bring your laughs, which not the hee hees and the ha ha. We want all the hollering. That's what we doing in <laughs> oh, at the Texas Church Theater. Bruce Bruce, Earthquake, my man, Bill Bellamy, Ha Ha Davis, and Tay Wayans. We got a show for you. Come check it out. April Fool's Comedy Jam. All right. Um, you know what? This is this 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 Russian war is even bleeding over into sports. And I just think I want to give a shout out to a Ukrainian tennis player, uh, Elena uh Sventolina. Ah, uh, she, I can't say her last name, Mark. She's S-V-I-T-O-L-I-N-A. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh, -huh, uh -huh. You know, good hear well, you can't spell nothing for I, me and get yeah. help. <laughs> <laughs> you got it yeah. right. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Uh, she has donated all her earnings for the Monterey Open to the Ukrainian Army. I mean, she, she and she's in the semifinals right now. Then also, she refused to you play a Russian well player. <laughs> she oh, refused to play. <laughs> she no refused to play so. a Russian player. Um, she refused to play it. Mm. She said if well, they don't a lot denounce, of that's happening. You know, they're not playing soccer with them anymore. All of that. No, 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 they're mm. not. But she, she said if they don't, it's, they can, they sanctions. have to be considered a neutral player. Hey, they Junior, you ain't had no, you ain't had no sports in the U.S. You could have talked about. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to it. <laughs> but I just thought, you know, this okay, is just we don't even, no, Hey, no, ladies, let me. I'm talking to him. <laughs> Yeah, here yeah. they come, finna defend him. No, we ain't got to defend him, oh, but I just like think it's important. Always trying to nurture somebody. You keep interrupting. Me and Tommy, me and Tommy talking to June. We don't even know what the hell he talking about. <laughs> what you, what we don't even done, know this June? girl's last name. <laughs> nah, nah, Tina split over. Who is she? <laughs> split over. Split She's over. giving up her money for the Ukrainian army, Uncle. They need help. <laughs> come on, Junior. So much tank cost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. If you need well, yeah. my check to help your ass out, <laughs> let's get out side. this damn walk. <laughs> Back state side, the NFL <laughs> combine starts today, Uck. I know you're going to be watching. Thank you, man. Cool. Quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight end is up for the day. Running Thank backs you. and offensive linemen tomorrow. Linebackers and DL, defensive linemen. They are on Saturday, and you got DBs on Sunday. Also, We need all that. We need all that. We're going to get all that. We're need all of that. I know ain't nobody upset, but uh, baseball won't be starting March 31st. I know that. It has the, the first well, two we got regular hundred, season series. We got 400 have games. Been we'll be able to catch them. We'll, we'll catch something. They won't play all of them. Not 162 yeah. this season. It's going to be a little short. So hey, Junior, thank you for your very, 
No, thank you, Junior, for your very political sports view that confused yeah. us all. Thank you so much. You're, you're welcome, Mom. If you just would have just let the girl buy the stuff for the army, you wouldn't even let her Who do is that? that? <laughs> thank you, Junior. Very Junior. good, Junior. He won't let uh, her coming up with the t- <laughs> coming up at the right top now. of the hour, Kim and Kanye are officially divorced. We'll talk about it at the top of the hour right after this. Whoa. Official. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. I guess we have to say congratulations in order for Kim Kardashian. Uh, the, yeah. I mean, she it's got official what she wanted, now. right? Yeah, it's official. She got what she wanted. The judge granted her request to be legally single. Neither Kim nor Kanye were actually in the courtroom, but their lawyers were there. Uh, I guess the ones Kanye had left because he fired a that's whole bunch you, of them, right? About that's three how you or four do of them, it. surely. Now, yeah. that's how you get divorced, though. You just what? go down there and fix this. I'll be here at the house. That's how you do it. <laughs> when you're billionaires. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so Kim was there via video. Uh, she was on a video call from her closet for the hearing. Kanye's lawyer didn't object to restoring Kim's single status, but he did have three conditions. What? what? You don't get any conditions, Kanye. The they judge... want the plane. <laughs> they want his her plane. What they want? Kim Air. Right. Well, okay. The judge only granted one, uh, and that was the right to get reimbursement of money that's supposed to be divided up, and that that will be preserved in case either of them dies. The other two that Kim didn't get, Tommy, wouldn't transfer any assets she had in trust, and if she remarries she would waive the marital privilege. The judge denied those, okay? So for the record, marital privilege means that a new spouse wouldn't have to testify about communications he had with her. There were reports that Kim's paperwork wasn't in order. In reality, the only error was that the Kanye's name had to be changed, okay? To Ye, his legal name. Ooh, I know she glad she... Yeah. (laughs) She's free of that. I know. But, you know, sad for the children, you know. Of course. I, 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 just, I hate that, that he left her with four children. So, you know, hopefully he'll still be present as a father, you know. But let's back oh, yeah. up to number one. Number okay. one means money has to be in a certain spot. Like, if something happens to them, that takes care of their children. Is that what that means? I, exactly. In case exactly. either of them dies, yeah. Okay. All right. But neither uh, one owes the other one any money or anything. It's just... No, we, and I think if they did, they would just pay it because they're both billionaires at this point. Right. Sometimes if you want your freedom, you know, you're willing to pay. Just like Tina Turner said, I just want my name. Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. want my name. Of course, that was Well, Kanye movie. getting his name? He, he, he had yay, right? He had, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he has yeah, a yeah. couple of names, yeah. so he's good. <laughs> what? <laughs> Kanye has been yaying for a long time. All right. Here we go, Carla. You have some music news. Um, what's going on? Well, it ties into Kim and Kanye. It's about Kanye's music video Uh so just like Shirley reported Kim and Kanye are divorced Tommy but he is still not letting her boyfriend Kim's boyfriend Pete Davidson off the hook so he has this new video that he dropped the single the song is called easy and so in the video Kanye appears to bury a cartoon version of Pete Davidson his ex Wife's he just boyfriend. he just not gonna stop. He, he just not right. gonna bury stop. him alive. He's, he's a cartoon yay. version. Yes, yes, yes. He's so yay. now the song features a verse where Kanye he's rapping and he mm-hmm. says, "God save me from the crash, just so I can beat Pete Davidson's behind." Blanket uh, blanket. But you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> so what? <laughs> <laughs> Get some way and sit out. Up. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's over, yay. Yeah. It's yeah. over. Yeah. 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 So. Now, what lot. happens, though, if Ye is like a guest on Saturday Night Live? What happens then? <laughs> well, you remember he was a guest host. Remember <laughs> yeah. that? Right, Mike right. And so has Kim been. But, but, but yeah. what if Ye goes back and becomes a guest again? How, how, what you think? Maybe Pete how this gonna pan out? will be off that night. Yeah, or he probably it's won't be do some that fighting. show. Backstage. Well, if it's live, we might get a live ass whooping, though. And, <laughs> and, and let's 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 make this clear. That don't mean Ye gonna be doing the ass whooping. We Pete might have some fun, Ye. I, we don't I know. Said, yeah, it's gonna be a fight. Yeah, <laughs> live right. from New York. It's Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this is so crazy. Sit down, Kanye. I ain't Ooh, never get divorced. Right. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Ever. <laughs> Coming up in Why 20 minutes. Why you ain't say that with me and Carla? Why you didn't I say hope, that? Why you ain't say that ever? that never happens. I you, see, right there, never you, never, you didn't say ever. You, I, I hope you, it never, ever happens. Ooh, Coming up in 20 uh, minutes after the hour, our very own Duke of Ottingham will tell us what's happening with the Royals right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, uh, I think the Duke of Ottingham is here. I mean, we want to hear his response to the story about the Queen. You know, there was a rumor going around that the Queen was dead, but apparently Queen Elizabeth, who is 95 years old, is very much alive, and uh, she's back at work already. She held two virtual meetings on Tuesday, and this was just nine days after testing positive for COVID. Well, let me clear it up. I'm here. Oh, okay, there you are. The Duke of Ottingham is here. Listen to me. The queen is very much alive. (laughs) Nearly dead, but very much alive today. Uh But she's still here. I'm living proof that the queen is alive because the moment she's no longer here, my black ass is out. They told you. They told you. You're getting the boot, the royal boot. I went in with a special recipe for my grandmother. I gave her two glasses of chitlin juice, and COVID left right away. Oh, that's how she was cured. It was an old my grandmother's recipe for anything. I gave her two glasses of chitlin juice. I told her it was tea, so she drank it right away. <laughs> and it was actually chitlin juice, and it turned out to be wonderful, and she's cared from COVID, and she's just letting everyone know that the queen is absolutely alive, nearly dead, but very much alive. Earl of Ottingham reporting live from Alice. the castle. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, you so Earl of Ottingham. Coming wonderful. Up at, Thank you. At 33 minutes after, we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time for Would You Rather, guys. Would you rather, would you have rather your parents arranged your marriage or marry your most recent ex? Oh, God. Would you you rather, would you rather your parents arrange your marriage or would you marry your most recent ex? I might mm. have to go with A on that one. Yeah. yeah. It can't be that X. No. You can arrange man, because obviously my pick was not the right one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me so, let somebody who got more sense than me pick for me. Let, yeah. Yeah, 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 let's try that. A. Let's try that, because there ain't no way in the world. Yeah. You marry your <laughs> no, 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 no. All my exes is for a reason. Mm. All right. Would you rather drink all the half-empty drinks or smoke all the cigarette butts the day after you had a big old crazy party. I'm not Rather doing that one of them. <laughs> you got a big I'm one. I'm not big doing that one. one of them. Drink the half empty drink no. or smoke hey. all the cigarette butts. Hey. Pick one. Would you rather? Hello. <laughs> you were just, come on. Them nasty mouths that's been on them <laughs> things and <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to smoke I'm... them cigarette butts. I'm just going to do that. Get it over with. <laughs> I, I can't him. swallow this stuff, all this backwashing, all this. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, no, I'm going to smoke these cigars. I'm going to light the wrong Damn. end first, too, so I can burn off a little bit of it. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm going to do these cigarette butts. I'm not drinking all them half drinks. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> That's smart, Steve. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Ugh. Junior? I'm going to go with eight. I you going to drink the slow. drinks? Yeah, I'm not doing the cigarette butts. I, they list was on them, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, this yeah. is nasty, uh, sure. It, it really is. It's a nasty witch. Yeah, y'all go ahead and drink them drinks and watch what happens. <laughs> <laughs> They've been sitting there all night, too? Yeah, go ahead. All right, Tommy, you got to pick one. Come you're on. Putting, you're putting liquid in your system. You're not sure. All the half drinks. You know how much that yeah. is, though? Mm-mm. No, give me okay. them cigarettes. I think I'm going to be close up, Steve. I'm going to get a razor blade and cut that tobacco out that cigarette and, ma- and just roll one big one. And roll your own. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to just put a bunch of Vaseline on my lips and go on start. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bunch of Vaseline. Lord. Okay. Mm. Oh, oh Which, shots fired. Yeah. Ooh. Ain't no more ain't no more Vaseline I got to use than you got to do eye mascara. So what's the difference? <laughs> uh-oh. Last, would you rather? Would you rather eat a head of raw garlic or a raw onion? Raw garlic or raw onion? Oh, raw onion. 
No, yeah. without a doubt. No. Onion. A head onion. of garlic? Oh my God. <laughs> no, I can Oh my God. What's the difference? I'd have ate a whole onion before pledging. I, I, I'm going yeah. go with that little piece of garlic. I got to go with that what? little piece of garlic. Little piece of garlic? Yeah. Tommy, you, you seen a clove? A clove of garlic? <laughs> Are you nuts? <laughs> Are you nuts? Boy, you. All right. Boy, look, your we skin go. going to stink. <laughs> That's today's round of Would You Rather. Coming up in 49 minutes after the hour, we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey. Tommy and must be here. Last break of the day. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are. Our last break of the day on this Thursday. It's been mm-hmm. a good day. Yeah. And yeah, Steve, it's what a been day. a pretty good what day. A day. Yeah. A couple yeah. of ignorant things got said. I love Junior's international <laughs> <laughs> sports coverage today uh, yeah. with Ukraine and sports. I love the way Junior made an attempt to be relevant today. Junior, <laughs> I thought it was a wonderful attempt at What's international <laughs> irrelevant sports you news said, today. You said <laughs> she could keep the money because that's going to buy one clip. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever money you the want from the little tennis tournament, you trying to donate to the Ukraine war, lady. You know how much it costs to go to war. Yeah, we need help buying bullets. We need to get out this wall. You can save yourself a little bit of money, man. I'm tell you right now, nah, that ain't what's going to happen right here. It'd be like me sending my check over there to help with foreign policy. What? <laughs> what you doing? Yeah. Or oh, I'm. But you know, because in essence, we're doing that too. Because a portion of our money goes to support whatever the government does, and it comes out in the form of taxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm Yeah. But she's going to take her winnings. That's not going to happen. I'm telling you right now, I don't voluntarily pay my taxes. I simply (laughs) pay my taxes because I don't want to go to jail. That's the only reason I pay mine. (laughs) It's because... I don't want to go to jail. And I've been so close to going before that I, they have my undivided attention. I pay all my tax. I don't care what it is, man. You don't never hear me talking about, no, I got to find a way to get out of this. Mm -mm. No, I got to find a way to stay out of this. Thank God that you can pay your taxes. Man, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. That's the blessing. Hey, listen, I got some closing remarks for y'all today. Hey, Steve, before you do that, can I just do a quick shout out to my brother? It's his birthday. Happy birthday, Fish. I love you. All right, man. Happy birthday, Fish. 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 Happy birthday, Fish. You know, that's great, Shirley. Uh, you have segments uh, where you can do that. Oh, and, uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Whatever, Fish. Man. What up with your pimp? <laughs> <laughs> Take up my time talking about your brother's birthday. Hey, I love you. <laughs> All right, let's go. Hey, you know, I, I found something the other day. I was listening to a guy. And he gave me a quote, and I love the quote, and I just wanted to share it with you. And the quote he said was, when you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person that walked into it. I want you to get this now. When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person that walked into it. Now, listen, I got to take the time to kind of break that down a little bit because we're dealing with two people who listen to stuff like this. You have positive people who hear this and you have negative people that hear this. And, you know, right away when you say something like that that you think is inspirational or enlightening or encouraging, if you're a negative person, you could take that, uh, take that quote the wrong way. When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person that walked into it. Yeah, that's why I was never the same after that. You know, I never recovered. I I just got so beat up by it. Yep, that's true, because you won't. I ain't ever been the same ever since he left, ever since she left. I ain't never been the same. That's not what the, That's not what it's talking about. And if you're looking at it that way, it's because you don't understand. When you walk out of the storm, you won't be the same person that walked into it. See, for me, that lets me know that the decision is up to me. Because life is 10% what happens to you. It's 90% what you do about it. Life is filled with adversity, but behind every moment of adversity, there is a lesson and a blessing. 
See, it depends on how you look at the statement. And I want everybody that hears this statement that when you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person that walked into it. I want you to look at it the right way, that you have a decision to make when you're going through storms, that you have a conscious decision that you can make to determine the results of the storm. Now, you can't always determine the results, but the outcome, the takeaway, that's yours. That's yours. You can't control who lives on this world and who has to leave this world, but you can accept the takeaway. When I lost my mother, and it was the most crushing, debilitating week of my life, and I promise you I've never had one since nothing like it, I realized at the funeral when the minister said, I know your heart is broken. I've been around this family my whole life. And this woman was a Sunday school teacher at this church for 40 years. And I've been around this family my whole life. I can see the look on your face is heartbroken. But I want you to take a look around at this church. It's packed. The basement is packed. The overflow room is packed. It's people outside. We can't let in. The street in front of this church is packed because of the life your mother led. Because for 40 years, she tried to tell people about Christ. All the pimps, hustlers, robbers, dope boys, they was all there because my mother did something to try to save them and change their life. And in that moment, he said something. He said, joy and depression cannot reside in the same place. So while as crushed as I was, and I thought about all the good things my mother had done, I felt so much better that day because of the lives she changed. Because, see, when you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person that walked into it. And after that day, I was never the same, but I was never that same for the right reason. So every day, I've tried to live my life. So when the day comes, if I got a chance at seeing Illos Vera Harvey, I'm going to see her again. That changed me forever. It's how you look at it, y'all. It's how you look at it. Start looking at it the right way. Those are my closing remarks today, okay? For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 